I want to circle back to a story we've been following for, I don't know, nearly a year at this point. Representative Diego Hernandez, a Democratic leader, was accused by multiple women of inappropriate conduct at the Oregon Capitol. Now this week, after a nine month long investigation, hearings about Hernandez's conduct have finally begun. Here's Maggie Vespa. I am going to call um, this remote meeting of the House Committee on Conduct to order. Almost every day this week at 530, the conduct of State Representative Diego Hernandez is being put under an official microscope. Please let me unequivocally say that I'm very sorry that I made anyone uncomfortable. Representative Hernandez himself has not appeared, but he spoke via his attorney. Many have judged my conduct without knowing the facts. One of his accusers spoke for herself. Here, she started by quoting a statement Hernandez made to the media about the accusations. He's recently said that dating when you're young is hard. No other dating experience I have had led me to hide in my closet. The committee chose not to reveal her name. And the anonymous gifts Arriving at my home and my place of work made me feel very exposed and vulnerable, like someone was watching me. She is one of three women who work at the Capitol who said Hernandez created a hostile work environment or made them believe their careers were in jeopardy. Each woman said they had dated Hernandez briefly and the harassment began when they tried to break up with him. An independent investigation supports their claims. Lawmakers are now voting on whether they agree with those findings. For example, the committee voted Hernandez created a hostile work environment for this accuser six times, including the time he showed up at her apartment unannounced, prompting her to hide in the closet, and the times he left flowers or sent anonymous gifts to her home. They'll decide his punishment later this week. It's worth noting two-thirds of the House would have to vote to expel Hernandez from his seat. This is just very serious. This is um, very serious. Lawmakers on the committee also said they would use this opportunity to examine the process of investigating claims of harassment. It's a new process that was put into place in 2019 after a number of women came forward alleging a culture of sexual harassment at the Capitol. This week, both Hernandez and this accuser called the investigation lengthy and invasive. Rule 27 is supposed to create a safe and welcoming environment at the Capitol. But the rule is overbroad and, in my experience, traumatizes all participants in an unreasonably lengthy process that does not seek restorative, reconciliatory, or transformative justice. Okay, Maggie Vespa joining us now. Maggie, we know that Diego Hernandez has taken issue with this process since the very beginning. Where does that stand now? Yeah, so we reached out to him again today just in light of these you know, recent hearings and it seems like right now he's pretty much letting that statement that his lawyer read do the talking but just to kind of recap he's had issue like you said with this process the entire time and in the past he's also said that he believes that this is kind of a coordinated campaign coming from house speaker tina kotek because he alleged she had an issue with how he voted um, on one specific bill and in response to that the house speaker recently said that's offensive and that she was just trying to do what investigators told her to do to create a safe workplace at the Capitol. But the representative hasn't been happy about how this has played out, as you said, since it began, pretty much. This investigation has been debated by more people than just them. Uh, even Representative Mark Meek, he threatened to leave the Democratic Party because of the way this was all being handled. He did. That was like a week ago. We broke that story. And ever since then, we've been reaching back out. I've been reaching back out, asking him, did he indeed do it? And we even checked his voter registry at one point because he wasn't getting back to us. And at one point, he also told me that he wasn't going to comment on the comment that he had made. Well, today, finally, I asked him again, and he sent me a text message back saying that he will not be switching parties. And when I asked him if he wanted to elaborate on that, he stopped texting. But it does look like even though he had frustrations with this process and he, how he felt it was playing out, uh, that he will not be switching from Democrat to independent, like he right. hinted he might yeah, the process isn't over, though, yet, right? So we have one more hearing scheduled for tomorrow. Is that correct? Right. We have tonight and then tomorrow. And then after that, we're expected to hear um, what might happen, if anything, uh, as far as repercussions go. So we'll keep right. watching. All right. Maggie Vespa, thank you.